Hey there YouTube, Brenda Petrella here, and today we are going to talk about where to focus in your landscape photography. If you watched my recent woozle, I alluded to a focusing technique called the hyperfocal distance, and today we're going to dive deeper into what the hyperfocal distance is and how you can use it to nail focus in your landscape photography. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. This way you'll stay up to date on all my latest photography tutorials, and if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. Okay, there are a few key concepts we need to clear up before we get into the nitty gritty about hyperfocal distance. The first is depth of field. Depth of field is the area or zone in a scene that is in focus. A narrow depth of field will only have a small area of the scene in focus, whereas a wider or deeper depth of field will have more elements of a scene in focus. In landscape photography, we are typically trying to get as much of the scene as possible in focus or quote unquote, acceptably sharp. Acceptably sharp basically means the sharpest focus that we can achieve for a given scene, given the limitations of the equipment we're using and any challenges in the scene itself. So acceptably sharp actually doesn't mean tack sharp. There are methods to achieve tack sharpness throughout an entire image, such as a post-processing technique called focus stacking, and I'll review that in a future tutorial. There are three things that influence depth of field. One is the aperture or f-stop setting of your lens. The wider the aperture or the lower the f-stop value, the shallower the depth of field will be. The smaller the aperture or the larger the f-stop value, the wider the depth of field will be. So generally, landscape photographers use smaller apertures when trying to get most of the scene acceptably sharp. This is typically in the range of f11 to f22. The second thing that influences depth of field is the focal length of the lens. So lenses with wider focal lengths have deeper depths of field. The third thing that influences depth of field is how close you are to your subject. The closer you are to your subject, the shallower the depth of field, and the farther you are from your subject, the deeper the depth of field. So to quickly summarize, to achieve a maximum depth of field, we want to use a narrow aperture of around f11 or above, a wide angle lens, and we want to make sure we have the correct distance from the camera to our nearest subject in the foreground. So how do we decide where to focus in a scene in order to have maximum depth of field and to have everything in the scene acceptably sharp. And that's where the hyperfocal distance comes into play. The hyperfocal distance is a somewhat complicated mathematical equation, but don't worry, we don't really need to go deep into the math to understand how to use it. The three factors that are needed to calculate the hyperfocal distance are the aperture, the focal length of the lens, and this other factor known as the circle of confusion. The circle of confusion isn't something we're really going to get into, but basically it is a number that represents how sharp a pixel would be perceived from a given camera sensor. The hyperfocal distance is the distance between the camera and a point in your scene at which everything from half the distance to that point and beyond to infinity will be acceptably sharp. This is your maximum depth of field. So in this example, the hyperfocal distance is 10 feet and everything from five feet nearer the rocks out to infinity, which would include the tree and the mountain, would be acceptably sharp when the photographer focuses on the tree at 10 feet. It is at this hyperfocal distance point where you should set your focus to get everything in your scene acceptably sharp from the foreground elements to the background elements. So how do you find the hyperfocal distance? Well, thankfully there are tons of hyperfocal distance tables available online. There are also tons of apps that you can download on your phone that would automatically calculate the hyperfocal distance for you. And I use the PhotoPills app to do this. So all you need to know is your camera body, the focal length of your lens, and what aperture you plan to use. And when you plug those things in, the hyperfocal distance is automatically calculated, and you will be able to know where to set the focus of your camera so that half that distance from that point to your camera and beyond to infinity is acceptably sharp. And with that, let's go hit the trail and see how hyperfocal distance works.
So today we are hiking on the Deer Leap Overlook Trail. It's right near Killington, Vermont. And I have a couple of reasons why I chose this trail for today. One, it's near Killington, so it's at a high enough elevation where we still have snow on the ground, even though it is the middle of April. <laughs> um, it's a trail I've never been on before, so I was pretty curious to see what kind of view was at the top and if it would be a potential Milky Way site. And third, I thought it, if we did have a nice overlook, it would be a great way to show an example of using hyperfocal distance in landscape photography. So there are a couple of situations where you don't need to worry about the hyperfocal distance. One example is when all subjects in the scene are far away or effectively at infinity. Another example when you don't have to worry about hyperfocal distance is when there is a clear subject in mind, like a flower or a wild animal, then you want to focus on that subject. The third time when you might not want to have to worry about the hyperfocal distance is if you don't have time to pull out your phone or whip out a hyperfocal table. And if that's the case, then just pick a narrow aperture at like say f16 and focus about one third of the way up from the bottom of your frame. Now this is by no means a perfect method, but it will quickly approximate the hyperfocal distance in many situations. It's amazing how a few hundred feet of elevation gain can completely change the landscape. So when I left my house, there was hardly any snow on the ground, maybe just a little bit left in the woods. And here we are in the Killington area and I've just hiked up, you know, maybe a mile and look at the trees are just caked. I feel like I'm in a, a winter wonderland again. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm almost at the top where the view is. I can already see it poking through the trees and I think it's gonna be amazing. The weather changed as I was coming here today, so I was a little worried that we were gonna be socked in with clouds and snow and rain and whatnot. So the weather's been pretty bad lately, but I think we're gonna get a really nice uh, moody shot. So let's see what we find. Spin you around. Okay, so as I said before, the weather was changing and it is certainly changing quite a bit. The wind is picking up, I'm freezing, so we're gonna make this quick. My goal here is to try to capture the rock that I'm on in the foreground with the sweeping valley and the uh, mountains off in the distance. Now, I admit, this isn't the absolute best scenario for teaching hyperfocal distance because I don't have a very strong mid-ground element. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up the PhotoPills app and I'm going to scroll down to the hyperfocal table. And in that, I've already entered my camera body here, which is the Nikon D810. And then on the left-hand side, I can scroll down and set the focal length for the lens. I'm using my 24 millimeter lens. So I go to 24 millimeters. And then I look at the top, and at the top is the aperture setting. So I can scroll this table along until I get to my f-stop, which I currently have at f16. And so at f16, at 24 millimeters, my focal distance is going to be four feet. So I have to set my camera's focus at four feet from the camera and everything from half that distance, so two feet out to infinity, should theoretically be in focus. Here are my settings. Here's the scene. You can see here, this is the rock that I want to have in my foreground, the rock that I'm on. And then here's the, the valley and then the mountains off in the distance. So as you can see, I, I don't really have a mid-ground element. This is sort of all out into affinity after this rock. But if I wanna try to get this rock in focus with the rest of the scene, I'm going to use the hyperfocal distance. And so what I'm going to do, got it set to live view. I'm going to scroll my little focus square down to about four feet into the image, which is right about there at the edge of this rock. So I'm going to zoom into 100%. And then I'm going to focus on that point. And right now I'm just using autofocus to do that. Zoom back out. And now I should be able to take my shot and everything should be in focus from this point out to infinity. So I hope this video helped you understand where to focus in landscape photography and helped you understand the hyperfocal distance. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
Make sure you get outside this week and do some photography. Till then, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.